Classic uh, Big Ten matchup uh, this weekend at Camp Randall with Wisconsin hosting Michigan State. Uh, at the beginning of the season, we would uh, most of us say that these two programs and 2019 rosters and versions of these programs would be right in about the same place. But five games into the season, they're looking like um, maybe different approaches and different stretch drives for these particular clubs. We've got Tyler Hunt on the line from uh, Bucky's fifth quarter. You can catch him and the rest of the staff there at SB Nation covering Wisconsin athletics. Tyler, how are you doing today? Good, really good. Excited for another uh, huge uh, Big Ten matchup in, in Camp Randall. So it's been, a, it's been a fun season so, so far. No question about that. And uh, I would say outside of Columbus that these have been the second and third best programs in the Big Ten over the past decade. They've been the teams that have given Ohio State fits and taken them to the wire and won the other championships by far over Michigan, over Penn State, over everyone else. They've consistently been 10, 11 win teams most of the time and again vying for Big Ten championships. But as we enter this game, Wisconsin just seems to be rolling in a great place, looking good. And Michigan State showing some leakage, some some issues uh, both on uh, both sides of the ball, and surprisingly on defense. Uh, this has to to make Jonathan Taylor and that offensive line crew salivate a bit. That Michigan State, which has been the best rush defense in the country for almost two seasons now, ripped up by J.K. Dobbins and company for over 300 yards. Yeah, I mean, coming into this, you know, this season, we thought this game would be something that would really be a big test. Uh, for that offensive line and Jonathan Taylor. And it still might be, you might see, you know, some of those guys that, uh, you know, the Joe Bocci's and the Kenny Willekes, who's, who still played well, but um, they haven't been as dominating as they kind of expected. Uh, but it's certainly a welcome sign because Dobbins is, you know, I, I think it's just as talented of a runner uh, as a guy like Jonathan Taylor. So if you can, if you can go out there and, and you know, approach the the game the same way that the Buckeyes did last weekend, you know, you actually, you, you have a, a plan of attack that you can go with uh, in this game. So it'll be important to see, and it's certainly interesting to see how that rushing uh, attack for Wisconsin will play out against their, you know, good run defense that way. I'm going to ask a question that you probably can't, well, you definitely can't answer it for sure, but you can certainly speculate and, 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 and foresee that at some point, and we might have talked about this last time, the, the game's going to be on the shoulders of Jack Cohn. You would think at some point there's just not going to be enough time on the clock to rely on the running game or the score situation is going to be, you know, two scores down with five minutes left or whether that's a one score situation with a buck 30 on the clock and you got to go 80 yards. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he responds and the wide receiver core. How would you rate the the explosive playability of the current receiver core against the best receiver cores that you've seen at Wisconsin? You know, I think they're they're up there. They've got a lot of depth. Obviously, Quintez Sivas being back, he's played a huge role uh, in, in in the receiving core. He's kind of been the number one guy for Jack Cohn. So far, but then you've got guys like uh, Danny Davis and Kendrick Pryor, who have not really gotten a lot of uh, opportunities to make plays. But you're, you're kind of just waiting for them to uh, to break out. But part of that goes to you know Jack Cohn finding them. Uh, we we didn't throw the ball a lot last week against Kent State because we really didn't have to. So it'll be interesting to see how that pass game and that pass attack uh, it comes out against Michigan State because, as you said, there's there's going to be times where they're going to have to throw the ball. Uh, and, you know, you hope that these guys that, that are projected to be really deep and, and solid in the receiving core are ready to step up and make plays um, because they're going to have to because you you're eventually you expect that Michigan State to take that run game away uh, a little bit and slow them down some. So these guys got to be ready. And they've certainly got the names and the talent to do it. It's Now it's just about seeing it you know, on the field. They definitely do have the names. If you follow Big Ten football or just uh, check out the top 25 games and keep up with uh, the national scene, these are guys that have been, I'm going to have to learn the complete Wisconsin wide receiver court next year because these are all guys that I'm familiar with, have seemed seemingly been on campus forever. When you talk about Pryor, when you talk about Davis and uh, A.J. Taylor as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but um it's a good wide receiver core. Jack Cohn uh, certainly running the offense in a workmanlike fashion right now. We will see how he gets tested against Michigan State and Ohio State coming down the road, as well as the Big Ten Western Division with Iowa in particular. How would you size up the Big Ten West right now? We saw Iowa go to the big house 
What surprised me there is sure Michigan State's Michigan's defense is extremely good, their front seven, uh, but they completely manhandled what is typically a top-notch offensive line there at Iowa. The the defense looked great, but they lose a 10 to 3 decision. And I was thinking going into the weekend, Wisconsin's 1A and Iowa's 1B in the Big Ten Western Division. Yeah, and I would agree with that. You know, I, coming into the season, I thought Wisconsin would win the West. I think over the past decade, it's been Ohio State and Wisconsin that have that have led the led the conference in wins. That I don't think that's by mistake. Um, you know, so I expected those two to be in Indianapolis later in the season. But coming into the season, you saw you you saw a path for a lot of different teams in the West. Really, anybody that other than Illinois. Look like they maybe had a path. Obviously, Purdue has kind of fallen off with the injuries that they've faced. And there were some people who expected them to be pretty good. But yeah, a lot of people saw that maybe they were a year away. And obviously, the injuries to Rondell Moore have, have hurt them. And then you've got, like you said, uh, Iowa is certainly in the running for that uh, West division. I think that'll be a, another big game that Wisconsin will have in Camp Randall. And then you've got uh, Minnesota and Nebraska, who are who've looked – you know, obviously, Minnesota is still undefeated, but uh, they've they've had some some luck go their way, and they have a big test with Nebraska this week. And you know, Nebraska got beat down by Ohio State, but they're certainly still in the running for that division if they can turn it on. So that'll be a huge matchup in the Big Ten West this weekend with those two squaring off. So as we get into conference play, um, this thing will start to shake out, and you'll start to see kind of kind of what direction it's going for sure. Talking Wisconsin football, we've got Tyler Hunt on the line from uh, Bucky's Fifth Quarter. It's the SB Nation platform for Wisconsin Athletics, so please check out uh, his work right there and the rest of the crew there on SB Nation. We're talking uh, Michigan State with Sparty coming to town, and uh, this uh, was the first Big Ten championship game back in 2011. The two teams split the title the season before. When we look at the offense uh, on the Michigan State side versus the Wisconsin defense, you know, things change from game to game and teams com sometimes come out as a completely different team from week to week. But at the same time, based on what we've seen to date, it's going to be difficult to envision Michigan State scoring much, gaining much yardage. Uh, they certainly had their struggles against Ohio State. They've been struggling for a year and a half to try to mount some kind of offense. Brian Lewerke is a workmanlike quarterback. He's a good player, not a great dynamic player, but he is shouldering the load. But uh, it's difficult, Tyler, to conceive that Michigan State's going to be able to do much offensively. Yeah, I mean, you kind of saw the the game plan with Ohio State. They took away that run game, and obviously Michigan State hasn't run the ball that well uh, so far this season. And you know, Ohio State shut that down, held them to, I think, only like 65 to 67 yards in that game. And I think that's going to be the same recipe that Wisconsin's going to go with. Uh, they're going to try and take away the run and make it, you know, make Brian Lewerke be the guy that beats them. Uh, I think if Michigan State wants to win this game, Lewerke will probably have to be the best player on the field. And, uh, you know, the, the the thing with their passing game, they, they've relied on it heavily. But one thing that they're going to have to deal with on top of, uh, obviously, a, a dominating Wisconsin defense is uh, the weather. They're, they're talking, you know, 17 to 20 mile per hour winds on Saturday at Camp Randall, which is going to make it hard for both Jack Cohn and Brian Lewerke to throw the ball. So if you're going to have to keep the uh, – ball on the ground it's certainly going to benefit uh, the Badgers that way because they've, they've ran the ball a lot better but it'll be interesting to see how that plays a factor uh, on both offenses. Elijah Collins has been the main back for Michigan State but less than a dominant performance out of him he's emerged but uh, yeah Michigan State since 2015 when they made the college football playoff I think Michigan State I think running the ball, playing just rock solid defense, but they have been a passing team for about five years now. And the rushing attack has generally not been very good. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, really concerns Mark Antonio, but that's been what the program has been now for about five years. Uh, as the games become bigger, the stakes get higher. Uh, this is another big opponent coming to Wisconsin. There are going to be a lot of people watching Wisconsin play for the first time across the nation in this one. Uh, any particular guys that stand out for you in regards to not necessarily just the best players, but guys that you think maybe you didn't know about, you knew that they were on the roster, but they've been called upon to step up. They've got a bigger role this year and they, they're coming through guys that we should look out for. You know, Wisconsin's obviously in the past always relied on a, on a tight end and, and part of their game plan. And we really haven't seen a lot of that so far this season. You know, as they get into Big Ten play and you're going to go with more smash mouth football, uh, you're going to face some, you know, less spread looks and more uh, of that under center type stuff. I think the tight end role for Wisconsin is going to be a, a bigger, you know, 
focal point. Obviously, Jake Ferguson is the main guy, and he's been a really good receiving tight end in the past. But he hasn't really got it going this year, and it's not really his, you know, his doing. He, he hasn't been targeted a lot. Um, so that'll be something to, to keep an eye on that, that we haven't seen a lot of from Wisconsin so far this season. Uh, as we get into Big Ten play, you, you hopefully Jack Cohen can rely on that tight end spot a little bit more. Uh, but at the same time, Ferguson's kind of been dealing with some injuries, and they, they have some depth issues at tight end. Uh, so they haven't been putting him out on the field as much as, as they wanted to. But obviously, you think of all the great tight ends for Wisconsin in the past, you, know, you expect them to, to use it more often. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that shakes out against the defense where you might have to rely on that safety net that the tight end position usually plays. So while the team performance is obviously paramount in trying to win a championship, uh, we look at the uh, Heisman Trophy race, Jonathan Taylor front and center as the main running back across the country that's going to vie for the award with a bunch of quarterbacks. Uh, when I think about what stands out to voters, gaudy statistics, number one. Number two would be, especially for a quarterback, but also for any position player, uh, if the team's winning, the team's got to be vying for a championship unless the, the the stats are just so overwhelming. And then number three, is there a moment or two or three during the season that people remember? This was a Heisman moment. This kid ran, this just run was just ridiculous. He had eight spins and broke 12 tackles, or it was a game winning run with, you know, 13 seconds on the clock, that sort of thing. So Jonathan Taylor obviously has to fill out the rest of the resume in regards to moments in big championship deciding games, but the rest of it all seems to be in play in regards to the team accomplishments to date. And obviously his performance is 7.2 yards per carry doing that in the big 10 and obviously the, the most, the, the, the bulk of the big 10 schedule is coming, but still uh, is, is pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, he'll have to keep it going for sure. Obviously you'll expect you're not going to play, you know, uh, Kent state and central Michigan and South Florida anymore. So you might see some drop off on that regard, but I still fully expect Jonathan to, to keep the ball rolling uh, and his campaign. Uh, I know he's hungry. I know he's worked really hard uh, this off season to get even better. You know, he, he, the last couple of years, he wasn't involved in the passing game. This year, you've seen him in there a lot more. Uh, so just trying to be a, a more well-rounded uh, football player and, and running back. And, you know, like you said, I, I think it's going to come down to a Heisman-type moment. And obviously, he's got the stage to do it this week. And then in a couple of weeks, when they go to uh, a Buckeye Stadium, you know, to take on Ohio State, that'll be a, a huge matchup where you could see, you know, maybe he has that breakout moment in a huge game. That, that really solidifies him as, as at least a candidate. But at the same time, the, the, the award has kind of been a quarterback award if you ask people in Wisconsin. Um, so he's going to have to put up those numbers and have those moments, but it's certainly possible. And he, so far, he's definitely in that conversation. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, uh, despite the championship run and the undefeated season, are there is there any attention by the uh, Wisconsin faithful given to what's going on in Tallahassee and Alex Hornibrook? buying for a starting job and putting in some some pretty decent uh, recent games for Florida State. Yeah, I think I think the fan base has kind of moved off of, of Alex. I think there's some of them who, who obviously wish him the best. Uh, but so far, Jack Cohen, I think, has done you know pretty much all you can ask for him to in filling in that role. And on top of that, at least for me and my, in my perspective, he's taking care of the football a lot better than Alex Pornybrook had. Um, I, I can't count how many times last year we shot ourselves in the foot because of of a turnover or a fumble or an interception that, that, you know, wasn't needed or, you know, it wasn't timely that way. So I think Jack's done all you can really ask so far, uh, but we're still going to have to see as he starts facing some more of these defense. Obviously he played well against Michigan, uh, but he's got another big test this weekend against, you know, a front seven like Michigan States. You can get my predictions by grabbing the link in the description section below. Just go to Voice of College Football Community. Grab that link right below this video in the description section. 13 and 6 against the spread uh, last week. And, of course, I'll have my selection on Michigan State, Wisconsin. I would guess that Tyler and the bunch there at uh, Bucky's Fifth Quarter will have predictions later this week uh, posted there, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We got full coverage uh, of that game. Uh, so if you're if you're looking for more, feel free to pop on over to Bucky's Fifth Quarter. Good stuff, Tyler. Thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate the breakdown on Wisconsin. And with the way the season's rolling, I'm going to be uh, hounding you for more uh, guest appearances coming up. Happy to do it. Thanks for having me, Mark.